Greetings to everyone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I hope that you all are doing better than usual. So I will be continuing. Um, this is actually the third part on false prophets, um, teachers, and receivers, right? I will be reading from um, 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 10 to 22. And then I would read a few verses in um, Luke chapter 12. So... Second Peter chapter 2, verse 12, I'm reading from the King James Version, says, But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, peace presumptuous are the self-will. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignity. So basically, remember, this scripture is pertaining to false ministers. And these false ministers, of course, when you are false, you are walking in the flesh, right? Because they are not doing those things that have pleasing to God, they probably do like part, but they can't serve two masters as the Bible tells us, right? So they are bold, they are doing things for their own personal, as it says, self will. Um, what does it say? They are not afraid to speak evil or wicked things about those that are in high authority, all right? Verses 11 says, Whereas angels which a greater in power and might bring that ruling accusation sorry yeah against them before the lord right verse 12 says but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things they sorry that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption so the bible is referring to them as natural brute beasts as beasts that and you know beast does not have sense so they like senseless animals all right and basically they're not reasoning and these false ministers right they speak evil and wicked things about the things that they do not know and not just false ministers it will be almost i don't want to go off topic right there are people in general that speak evil about things they do not know just because they don't believe it to be true and sadly, you know, it have consequences for those things, right? So it says that they will perish in their own corruption, in their own dishonest and wicked, fraudulent behavior. Verse 13 says, And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to rise in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes, spotting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. So these, um, of course, false prophets, their reward is unrighteousness. You know the reward of unrighteousness is eternal damnation and hell, right? Unless they repent. But this is the reward for those who choose not to repent and to deceive people and to lead people astray using the name of God, especially Jesus Christ, right? Um, what does it say here? Um, what else? Verses 14, having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and hearts that had um, exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. So they have eyes full of adultery. These people are adulterers, not, probably not all of them, but they of course remember they are self will so they seek to please their, please their flesh especially if they let's say they all marry or they marry and probably for some reason that the bible did not sanction they decided to get divorced right because there's only one one purpose that um jesus allowed divorce and it is for um if one of the person in the marriage is actually commit the act of adultery or is unfaithful but it did not go on to say to remarry okay even though a lot of people say that it never said that right that was very clearly it, there was no way jesus said to go and remarry after that um this is actually saying this yes it says so they would be this cannot cease from sin they cannot stop from sin right um they beguile, they entice, they um do all these things to tempt 
and offer pleasure like for example as i said last video seed seed is one of the main thing for us providers use so tell people give us seed you'll get blessing and a lot of people tend to believe this and i would like some of them if they ever come across this video to tell me to comment on this video and tell me if since you have been um giving money to force ministers uh, for seeds if you have actually received any of those blessings at all if any promise by uh, giving those seeds right it also said that the exercise covetous practices again covetous means greed actually it does be greed for other people's stuff but they have this greedy practice for more right and the bible called them cursed children they are cursed because of these things verses 15 which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of balaam the son of boso who lived sorry loved the wages of unrighteousness so they turn away from the straight way from the straight and narrow way which is the only way in jesus christ right and they go on astray unto those things that are ungodly right um, they follow in the way of this basically is a Bible story with um in the Old Testament with Balaam, the son of Esau and stuff. And they say they love the wages of right of unrighteousness. Probably they love the wages of unrighteousness now, but the eternal wages of unrighteousness, which is in hell, is not gonna be cool, it's not gonna be nice. And you will see why in a while. Um verse 16 says, but was rebuked for his iniquity the dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet now i don't want to go into the story i actually would have had to review it but um this is a story in um the old testament concerning um balaam who wanted to um who actually wanted this this man of god to to curse the chair of Israel, right? But as the Bible says, who oh God bless no man curse. So anytime the prophet kept trying to curse the chair of Israel, it happened that he was blessing them, you know. Um, but let me continue. Verse 17 says, These are well without water, wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the midst of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allow um, through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that will clean escape from them who live in error. So, um, basically, the swelling words talk about, they talk about his huge, you know, boastful stuff, vanity, pride, right? They use all these words to entice to attract to ten people to come after them you understand and basically it continues to say in the end that those that were clean escape from those who live in error so the people that are that should i say became righteous will get away will flee from those who live in sin verses 19 says while they promise them liberty they themselves are the servants of corruption for of whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought to bondage so basically these false ministers promise people liberty freedom right but they themselves are the servants of dishonesty of fraudulent behavior and basically it's like this when any of us sin we actually give the enemy access in our life right and when we give the enemy access into our lives um he become our master so there is no freedom in the enemy even though people feel that because they can live their own life they're free they're probably free in the sense not totally in the sense in the natural because they don't understand spiritual but in spiritual with the um satan of you they are not free you understand they are servants of sin they are servants of satan right so their master becomes satan right so someone whose master is satan who lives a life of unrighteousness cannot 
give anyone freedom freedom comes from in christ and not freedom to live how you want yes christ becomes your master but you'll be free from sin free from bondage free from this the loss of the flesh and so forth once you do those things necessary to get there because they don't just happen like that right versus um basically and it says who am i to overcome right so who conquers a man so that person you basically become bound to so when sin is in a man's life you become born or the servant of sin verses 24 if after they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the lord and savior jesus christ they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter and it's worse with them than the beginning so again the false ministers right they would have escaped in other words come to god change around their life escape from the ungodly defiling sinful life but um truly knowledge the word of god but they now end up backsliding going back and say well it takes me to get in more involved as entangled getting involved in those things that are ungodly basically they get they become overcome again by sin and the later part of that personal life is going to be worse than the first right with the spirits and everything right and verse 21 says for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them so you see seriousness of knowing the will of god and to live up as a believer in christ and then to turn away from it the consequences are worse and before I tell you why the consequences are worse, I want to read the last verse and then I will go to Luke chapter 12. Verse 22 says, But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to its, his own vomit again. And the soul that was washed to her um, swallowing in the, in the mar. So basically, what it is saying here, like the first example of the proverb is that, um, it's like when you become a child of God and you're born again, repent and turn from your sins and thing, right? And you're baptized, you become your sins, your former sins become buried when you're baptized, right? So basically, when you now decide to go back out into the world, right? When you decide to go back out into the world, what happens is that um you come like you're going back to take back up that same garbage you once um got rid of so that why i saying the scripture is saying that um it's like a dog returns its, its um own vomit right i want to read luke chapter 12 before i end concerning why it is very serious when you become a child of god and um the consequences of backsliding verses 45 says but and if that servant shall say in his heart my lord delayed his coming right this is a slightly different scenario but i'm going to tell you why it is as i said why it is serious when you backslide right um and begin to beat the men servants and me servants and to eat and drink with the drunken so basically this was a sum of the lord and he said think that okay god is taking so long to come um i am going to beat the servants mistreat the servants drink you know waste time do foolish stuff and verses 46 said the lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him and at an hour when he's not away and will cut him asunder and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers right and that servant which knew the lord's will which knew god's will through the word of god and prepared not himself neither did according to god's will shall be beaten with many stripes and this many stripes speak about punishments in hell so the punishment in hell for someone who knew god who was a minister minister or not but once you were in god in christ you were baptized all those things and then your your backslide or your leader people that show as false ministers or whatever the case is it was a, a true minister then you become a false minister because of the love of money whatever the case is he strives the punishment in hell is worse and what the bible continues to say is that 
But he that knew not, as verse 48, but he that knew not and did commit, did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whosoever much is given, um, of him shall much be required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they shall will ask the more. So basically what is also saying is that those that live a sinful life but do not really know God, they will be punished in hell right but their punishment would not be as severe compared to someone who was actually a minister or was in christ was born again all this kind of thing knew the truth knew the will of god but yet play the fool or say god taking too long to come let me just live my life or baths or whatever the case is but as i was saying put in the false prophets because in um dealing with the will of god is a serious thing a very very serious thing right and we ought to take that very serious and the false ministers i just from time to time i tend to pray for them i don't really call names because i mean i might think that certain persons are but i might have be sure so i will pray general and pray that these people will repent you understand and stop leading god's people astray so you all have a blessed one i will see you all soon again god's willing goodbye